I love that we're finally seeing companies incorporate more diorama components in their figure bases. Look at the detail and the sand texture here. And the best part is that these footprints fit any fig... They fit any figure. You're just going to strategically pose it in, in a way that... God... Geez. Welcome back to Crafted by Metamorphic Customs. Look, these sand bases are great, but we gotta address them. There's way too many of them, and now they were great, but... It's the footprints. It's the same exact footprints on every iteration of the base, so it makes it look a little weird. But the good thing is, you can modify this by removing the screws at the bottom, and just removing the top of the base. It doesn't damage the base, you can always put the screws back in. So there's five screws. And these holes you see, except for the hole in the center there, that doesn't have a screw in most of the bases. So it's going to be the four corners and the hole towards the front of the base. And all you have to do is get a very, very small screwdriver. This is actually smaller than a, a zero Phillips head screwdriver, but just get one that fits, usually something for micro hobbies. And just get in there and start unscrewing these Phillips uh, head screws. Now, no lie, some of these are pretty stuck in there either because they're thread locked or the screw boss is just tight so I'm using a wrench here or a tool pliers to help me uh, and assist during the process but again there's five screws uh, one in each corner and one towards the front of the base so remove those and the top of the base will just simply pop off again if you ever want to put it back just use the screws and screw them back on uh, no big deal but for now we're going to need the bottom of the base and make sure you keep the screws which we're not going to reuse right now but just keep them in case you ever want to re-screw the top of the base the sand back on the bottom if you need to resell your figures or whatnot once you re-screw it you won't be able to tell you ever took it off but for this quick project we just need the bottom of the base put the screws aside and i'm going to use this template which you can download in the link in the video description below this template just sizes out uh, what will be the surface of the base. This is the same template I used in my previous videos showing you how to create a base topper for the flat bases. This isn't a flat base, this is a sand texture base, that's why we have to remove it all together. Once you download the template, go ahead and cut it out, and this will be, again, your, your template. This is a round, well, approximate, rectangular Hot Toys base size. And here are some of the materials we're going to use. This is foam core board that I got at the dollar store. That's the white one. And then the greenish, bluish one is XPS foam, which I always use from the hardware store. It's just a chunk, spare chunks, right? This foam core board is uh, a piece that I've cut out from the entire sheet of foam core board. Again, that you can get at your dollar store, Dollar Tree. I believe it's called Ready uh, Board. It's about $1.25 per the entire sheet. It's a sheet that you use for school projects. It's foam in the middle and it's got a sheet of paper on both sides. And it's really great for these types of projects. Uh, eventually we'll take the sheet of paper on both sides off and we'll peel that off. But for now, we're gonna size it down using the template we cut out. So we're gonna place the template here and we're just going to trace it so that we can then come in and cut out a piece of foam core board using an X-Acto blade. And just do slow, smooth cuts. I've actually cut out two different pieces because I'm gonna be doing two of these uh, platform toppers, if you will. So before I go any further, I just wanna make sure it fits. It's flat, it's about the right size, and that looks good. Now I'm going to use my chunk of XPS foam, which I got from the hardware store. This is just a spare chunk. It's about half an inch thick, but we're going to cut it down. I placed it inside the black base, as you can see here, and I'm making a line that I'm going to cut out. This line or this chunk that I'm going to cut out is the actual depth or the height, I should say, of the base. It's what's going to support the foam core board topper. I'm going to cut out four of these. The width doesn't matter, it's just the height. As long as the width fits within all these little screw bosses in there, you can get it in there, it should look a little like this. The point is, when you put the topper on it, as so, the XPS pieces inside will support that topper. It'll support the weight of the figure on that white piece of foam core board. So those XPS chunks are critical. 
could you use something else that's not XPS? Sure, you can use whatever you want. Whatever you have lying around that'll support that foam core board and the weight of any figures placed on top of it. Before I go any further, let's go ahead and peel off that layer of paper on either side of the foam core board. It's very easy to peel off if you're using the Ready Board brand of foam core that's available at the Dollar Tree. Use some hot glue and glue it down. You're only gluing this down to the XPS support chunks, support blocks. You're not gluing anything to the actual base. As you can see here, ignore the chicken scratch at the bottom, but it's just glued to the XPS chunks. That means you can easily put it on and remove it and nothing is permanent. And once you put a figure on top of it, it's definitely gonna hold it down. Not that you need to put a figure on top of it, it's not going anywhere. Perfect flat base, no more footprints in the sand. Now, how do you decorate? I've got two here ready to go, but how do you decorate these things? Well, on one of them, I'm going to simulate a very, very simple metal floor, but I wanna put some plate lines, panel lines. So I'm just gonna score or trace, I'm not cutting, score some you know two lines uh, a two intersecting lines one along the uh, back edge so run a metal tool not a knife just a blunt metal tool along to score it uh, create an indentation along the back edge and along the right edge you can put these lines or not put any lines i'm just trying to get a little creative these are meant to be very 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 simple and before I go any further, let's put down some wax paper so I don't get too much paint on my brand new cutting mat. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge. You can use Elmer's glue. This doesn't really require Mod Podge, but I have it, so but use Mod Podge if you have it, or Elmer's glue. And for the first metallic plate topper, I'm going to mix some black paint, cheap hobby grade black paint, and some cheap metallic gunmetal paint into the Mod Podge or into the Elmer's glue. No exact ratio, about 50-50 paint to, or one-to-one -one paint to, uh, to Mod Podge or Elmer's glue. And just brush it on. It should come in pretty dark. It's gonna look pretty black. It just has a little bit of that metallic flake in it. And later we'll do a little bit of dry brushing. But for now, just evenly coat this with a brush. You can use a bigger brush, smaller brush, whatever you want, just get it coated and don't forget the edges and the side because that will absolutely show so this is pretty quick i this video is sped up clearly but it took me what, like five minutes or less to get this painted if you need to give it a second layer once this dries, go ahead, that's that's fine. Just try to keep it even so you don't see paint streaks on it once it dries. Speaking of drying, while that dries, we're gonna get some Mod Podge and I'm gonna mix it with some raw umber paint. Again, hobby grade paint, cheap paint. Gonna mix it one to one ratio and I'm going to paint the other one I've got here. This is just another example of something you can do. Same deal, get even coverage. The ultimate coverage here doesn't matter if it's streaky or not because you'll see what I do here. I'm gonna create a sand texture base without footprints. But I wanna put down this, this color uh, just so that there's any holes or gaps in the sand you see through won't be as obvious. Uh, you can use any kind of sand khaki color. Uh, I just used raw umber, or I'm sorry, natural umber. and I'm going to use Mod Podge mix with one-to-one -one water. So watered down Elmer's glue if you want, or watered down Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna apply that all over. Remember this stuff dries clear and matte. I'm using matte Mod Podge. Elmer's glue would dry matte or satin. And once I've coated the entire base, the glue is still wet, hasn't dried. I'm going to go ahead and spray or sprinkle, I should say, some some sand on it. This could be dirt, uh, it could be gravel, it could be anything that's going to stick to glue, right? So I just want to recreate a textured sand base without footprints. This is very easy to do. Literally just pour the sand on, make sure you've got even coverage there. Any little spots or holes that, that peek through will be that bottom base color. So you're 
pretty much good to go. And you can leave it at that point. I'm gonna add a little bit more shading and uh, color tones to that sand base. What I'm gonna do is I've come back with dark brown or chocolate brown, I believe this is called, in this hobby grade paint. And I mix it with water, about one to one, 50-50. And I'm just gonna apply it, dab it on here, dab it all over, however I want, however you want to do this. Again, you don't even have to go this far. The sand texture is pretty much good on its own, but I wanted to add a couple of more color tones here. And I'm actually gonna come back later once this dries, and I'm gonna apply a couple more shading. Uh, shading colors on that base. For now, I'm going to use that gunmetal color. I'm going to switch over to the uh, metallic plate floor and I'm going to use a one inch brush. And get some of that gunmetal paint on the brush and wipe most of that paint off on a piece of paper towel in order to create a dry brush effect. I'm going to do just that, just brushing back and forth with minimal paint on the brush. It's important to do this very slowly. If you think you have just the right amount of paint on the brush or clean some more off before you actually start painting the base because this should be what the end result looks like. You can put more or less, but it's important to start off with just a little bit of paint, almost nothing, no paint on the brush when you're dry brushing anything. That's the technique. And just quickly back and forth, put some paint on there. And you can see it gives that metallic effect, which is Pretty convincing considering it's a piece of foam. Now let's go back to the sand texture uh, topper base. I wanted to add a little bit more color tone, so I went back to that dark, watered down dark chocolate, dark brown mix, and I added a little bit of the natural umber on it. This is the color I used as the base paint before I put the sand on the base. So I added down this dark brown mixed with uh, natural umber and then watered down and I'm using that to just put some more color tones all over the base. And one last thing here, again, you don't have to go this far. I just like adding different colors, but I'm using some FW inks. This is sepia, mixing it one to one with water, again, watered down. And this is the last thing I'll do here. I'm just going to place this watered down ink mix all over uh, the sand texture base. It's actually going to seep in through the sand texture and once this is dry, it's going to take a little bit to dry since it's very watered down, but once it's dry it'll create a very very convincing sand texture effect. Again, without the footprints. So if you want to keep a sand texture in your Hot Toys base to keep some kind of consistency with the other sand bases which have human beings on them that fit the footprints or you just want some a little bit of change this is what you can do again this is the original Hot Toys base and our completed flat no footprint sand texture base and look no footprints to worry about <laughs> you can place this figure or any figure in any pose or position you want and still keep this base which is consistent with the other Hot Toys bases and you haven't damaged the base you can always put that surface back on there by screwing the top back on and you can use any theme you want this is a metallic base think about the techniques you've learned from previous videos where I've shown you how to make uh, forest bases or cave bases you can use that here if you want if you like this video and found it helpful and want to support the channel all you have to do is comment down below like, subscribe, and don't forget to stay crafted.